The reason why we go back to old habits is because our goals are too lofty. We're not achieving our goals fast enough. So what happens is, you know what? Oh man, I'm, we're very impatient nowadays. For me, it was good. I didn't have a phone. I was, I was, I was out of this world by myself. It was a race against David Goggins. It wasn't a race against, God, I don't look good for this person or that person. It was me. I got to change myself. So for me, if I lost five pounds in a week, I got a feeling. I allowed myself to feel proud of that. I didn't look at I got to lose 106 pounds. I'm like, man, I went from 297. Now I'm 292. In one week, man, I'm, I'm killing it. We don't. We're not proud of ourselves for the small accomplishments. What we need is we need this monstrosity of the thing to happen and say, ah, I did it. Nah, there's a process that you have to go through and patience is the process. And if you don't have patience, after a week, I haven't lost 30 pounds and I'm done, I'm over it. So that's why I found out with people, man, they're not patient enough to realize and to enjoy the moment, not live in it, just enjoy it. There's no finish line in life, but enjoy that moment. Roger that, man, I lost five. Let me go 10 next week. So that's the whole thing about it. That's how people lose it. A lot of us dream big. You, you should dream big. Dreaming big is important. You know, some of us want to be doctors, lawyers, dentists. Some of us want, you know, want, want to be in special operations. So you have this big dream. You can see it so clearly like it's right in front of you. You can go out and touch it. But the thing about it is somewhere, if you dream big enough, somewhere down that journey, that dream becomes a nightmare. And what happens in that nightmare, you start to have all these questions. Like, if you want to be a special ops, you may not be a great swimmer. You may just realize that I'm not a great swimmer, I'm not a great runner. You may start to fail tests. And all these questions start to flood your mind. Why am I here? I'm not good enough. Trust me, I know all about the questions. They will flood your mind. If you do not have the answers for them, you will quit. The answers lie in the repetitions. You must not forget the repetitions you put into trying to dominate the craft that you're in today. Always, always embrace the suck, adapt to the suck. So what's your fucking excuse? Is it too cold where you live? Is it too hot where you live? Does it rain too fucking much? Now it's time for some real fucking talk. Maybe you're the only black person applying for a fucking job. Maybe you're the only female. Maybe you're the only fucking gay person. Job, whatever the fuck it may be. Maybe that shit's in your fucking head. Maybe that's your excuse for not being better. Life's a real big fucking picture. When I was young, all those things got in my head. Black, fucking not smart enough, single mom, all that bullshit, own space in my head. If you're allowing people and things and situations to own space in your fucking head, you're losing. Last thing, life's one big fucking head game. You play with yourself. If you lose, it's because you allow life to get in your fucking head. Stay hard. In, in all those horrible situations, they prove really that humans can withstand almost, almost unimaginable stress. Which meant to me that I could too. And you can. And, and the first step for me is doing that, taking that look to gain some perspective. And then in order to gain perspective, you've got to do something that we already talked about. You've got to detach. You've got to detach from the problems or the stress that you're experiencing so that you can get that perspective of them. Now, there's a couple different types of stress. Now, if it's something that you can control that's causing you stress, well, why aren't you getting control of it? Generally, it's a lack of discipline. So you gotta have the discipline to grab control and make it happen. And when I say you need discipline for that, what that means is these stresses that you're avoiding, they're not gonna go away if you avoid them. So take the discipline to face the stressful situation. Get ahead of it, don't be afraid of it. 
When you're afraid of something, you have to master it. That's how you start to overcome it. So what I realized, when I get to that point where I want to quit everybody, they get to the point where they want to quit. This is what happens. The mind tells you, let's go home. Let's take a warm shower. Let's get some food. This is not right. This is that. If you cannot answer the questions at that moment, because your mind's going to start giving you all these questions, all these questions, and if you can't answer them, you're going to quit. What I realized when I was going through Buds, Ranger School, all this 100 mile race, 200 mile races, pull up records, my mind would come creeping in. Like when I was doing 4,030 pull ups at, at, at 2,000 pull ups and my hands were ripped open, my mind said, Look, brother, we've done all these other things. You've proven yourself. You're good. If I didn't have the answer to respond to my mind and say, Why I'm here, why I'm doing this, you will always lose that fight. You have to have the response to what your mind is going to tell you. And another thing about that is self talk. A lot of people have like these big four on mental toughness. All that's is crap about self-talk, visualization. It's true, but the thing about self-talk and all these things, they ask me, what do you think about when you're on mile 100 of a 205 mile run? What are you thinking about when you realize you've run for 24 hours and you have 24 more hours to run and you have another 105 miles, what goes through your mind? What do you say to yourself? I want to know. A lot of people think self-talk works. It does, but it doesn't work without the suffering before your mind starts saying we need self-talk. So what I tell myself is I go back to the months and years of preparation to get to that day. And I'm telling myself the 3.30 in the morning and I'm looking at my shoes and I want to go out there and run 30 miles. I have to in that second, in that moment of this self-talk, my mind saying, you got to find more, you got to find more. I once again calm down, go back into my mind, in my cookie jar, I call it, and I have to reflect back on the shit I did to get here. And that becomes my self-talk. Self-talk does not work unless it is real. Most of us lie to ourselves in this self-talk. It doesn't work. It has to be real. It has to be something that you've done to make it really work you don't have the equipment or the gear lies you don't you don't know the best way who cares that's a lie or you're too old or you're too young of course you're too old or too young why and there's you're too busy sure you are And you're too tired, or you're too sore, or you're just plain not feeling it. Lies, lies, lies. And the list goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop if you don't make it stop. So recognize. So there's a lot of pockets of weakness nowadays. And we try to fill his pockets with lies. I did it for many years. So, I'm out here in Colorado for a conference. And I go to the gym and this trainer calls me over to talk to this group of people he's training. He says, hey man, what are you doing out here? So I tell him, he says, what kind of workouts are you doing? I said, well, one workout I'm doing, I'm climbing up this mountain, 3,000 feet, three miles. Because I do that every day. So the next day I'm out looking for him. Didn't see him. A couple days later, looking for him. Didn't see him. So here I am on the mountain again, climbing it. And there's a gondola that takes you up, takes you down. I'm going up it. I see a gondola. I'm about five minutes from the top. I look up at the gondola. I see him, face pressed up against the, the uh, window, looking at me, our eyes meet. It's called a look when you take a motherfucker's soul. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Practice what you preach. Stay hard. You have to learn what do you want in your life? We have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost. We don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves. You have to learn to shut off a phone, shut off a computer, shut off a TV. And it's okay to sit in a room by yourself in a chair and just think about you, where I want to be, 
where, where do I see myself tomorrow, the next year, the next year from that? And it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to do that nowadays because you want to be so, so attached to everything. You want to be so caught up with the world. The world's moving too fast. The world's moving so fast that you're trying to keep up to the point where you lose yourself in the world. So you have to take that time and go to that dark place in your mind and discover who you are.